guys welcome back to my channel it is december which means it's christmas i thought it would be only appropriate if we do a christmas festive cooking video we've never had a cooking video on the channel before i've done quite a few like cooking videos on my instagram pages and a lot of you guys said oh why don't you do them on your channel i thought what a brilliant idea so i thought i will do um uh, a Christmas recipe for you guys today. I'm making gingerbread cookies today, which I'm super excited. With no further ado, let's crack on with the recipe. So, what you guys will need is a bowl. You're gonna need, well, you can use a whisk and you're just a strong hand arm. I don't really have the muscles, so a good whisk will do. What you will need today is that you'll need 125 grams of butter. It can be unsalted, it can be salted, however you like. I'm gonna have it salted, just because I like a little bit of salt when I make things, but you can have it unsalted. It won't really change the whole recipe. Too much taste the same. Put this in room temperature, so I'll whack that in there. Yeah, it's just not gonna come out, is it? I'm stuck. There we go. And what I like to do when I have um, margarine butter to basically soften up. So basically just giving it a whisk will soften the butter up for the next process. Now we want to soften the butter up. The consistency you want to go for is mashed potato. That's the best way I can describe it. So if it looks like mashed potato, light and fluffy like that, you have got a very well fluffed up butter mix. <laughs> Okay, you now want to add brown sugar. You can use light sugar. I have dark um, brown sugar, I think. And you also need 175 grams of dark brown sugar. So I'll pop that in there. And then once you've got the brown sugar and the butter, we want to again mix the mixture together. See, this is why you want to mix because it's going to be a lot of manhandling and a lot of this. I'm just gonna quickly go over it with my arm just to make sure the butter and the sugar has well formed together. The consistency you wanna aim for at this point is just sticky sugar and butter. <laughs> if, that can, if that makes any sense. It should just be really sticky and just like, doesn't wanna come off each other. That's the consistency you wanna go for. Gingerbread cookies, but the process to make it happen it's a hard one sometimes. Next step, I've got to try and open this. This is not going to be fun. I'm going to break something. Yep, just press it. Right. right, this is when you need your boy or your strong partner or anyone with the muscles in the family to do parts like this. Oh my god. Goodness, this is literally impossible. They must think when they like manufacture this stuff, they're like, right, so we need packaging to get to the shots, but we don't need packaging that only a nuclear bomb can open. I think I've done it, yeah. A lot of you people will not actually know this actually goes in gingerbread. A lot of Americans, or any if you watch a American cooking channel, they'll use a ingredient called a molasses. Basically a, a gooey liquid substance. We don't use molasses, well generally we don't use it in the UK. We use golden syrup or just syrup of some sort. After the sugar and butter we're going to need five tablespoons of syrup. It can be golden syrup, any kind of syrup you want. It needs like that gooey consistency. It's what gives ginger biscuit a chewy texture. We need five tablespoons of this one. One. Jeez, I might just do four. I can't be asked to wait this long. I can do just three. I'm actually gonna do four. I am. I can't. I can't wait this long for this to come out. I'll just do one big one to make up for the fifth. All right, that's a big one. This is four slash five. Um, I can't be asked to wait another spoonful. I would say five tablespoons it's just about under half a cup so if you guys go by cups it'll be half a cup i really should turn my hair up for this one gotta look cute 
you want to do this is great i'm gonna prepare you this is sticky it's hard to work with it's do at the end of the day is gonna be so we basically want to mix our golden syrup with our sugar and our butter so that's together it will look like it will look like dough it'll just look a wet damp dough texture you start mixing the, the ingredients will start to collide really well together i love that part of cooking it's just like it just all works out in the end <laughs> Moving on, we now want to add one egg into the bowl. I do really, really encourage you guys to please get free range eggs. We try and get our eggs from a local farm in the area. If you can, please get your free range eggs. Here. One egg going in, and we go again. The we want to be going for now is a cake kind of mixture, like loopy, easy, easy to work with. Oh my good. I wouldn't say I'm a professional cooking channel, just to clarify. Right, next we want to get our bad boy sieve out. We are going to want 350 grams of plain flour. Any lumps out. This is the best part. In this little bowl here, I have one teaspoon of cinnamon. We've got two teaspoons of ginger, one teaspoon of baking powder. Once you add this in here, expect your nose to be in heaven. It is so gorgeous. So I'm gonna whack that in with my other dry ingredients. And then we just want to sieve. Oh, this is amazing. Right, if I could send you the smell through this video, I absolutely would. It is heaven. You can use the whisk or you can use your hand. I like to start off with my hand because whisk, you know, if you want a white face and covered in flour, be it my guess and lose half the grids on the floor. But I like to kind of combine it and then I'll use the whisk after. Get my hands and just combine it all together. Once you've got it into a dough consistency, it's not like a normal cookie dough that you guys have ever worked with. It's not like you can just roll it up now, cut it into shapes, and then whack into the oven. Because of the grates we use, it will be very goopy. So the more you work with it with your hand, it's all gonna start falling apart and it's just gonna be a gooey, liquidy mess. You are going to, you're gonna to need to refrigerate it or freeze it. If you choose to refrigerate it, I do recommend it do it overnight. If you are going to put it in the freezer two to four hours, it basically just needs to be hardened. So when you roll it out, it's really cold and you cut the shapes out and you basically just lift the shapes onto the tray and it just can go all runny and stick to things. So I'm gonna put this into the freezer for about two to four hours. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this into a bag, roll it out in the bag to make my life a lot easier. And then I'll put this into the freezer. Once it's out the freezer, I'm ready to roll it out, cut it into a shape, put it in some clean fill. You want a really big piece you're gonna want to squish it out. I'm gonna lay this on the table like so. I'm just gonna whack the dough like that. And these biscuits should aim to make around about 20. Your average cookie size cutter should make around about 20 cookies. Just space it, smudge it down. And then you are going to want to grab another piece of clean foil. Then you want this to just go on top. You now want to smudge it out. You want to lay it out something like this so when it is frozen or very, very cold, it's just going to be a lot easier for us to roll out. So it gives us basically a head start. You want to cover the edges. That is completely all sealed up. It's, as you can tell, you just cannot work with that. It's like, I feel like I'm making like a, those, those pizza doughs and, and they're like, we are going to want it to look something like this we either want to refrigerate it overnight or back in the freezer for a couple of hours i'm choosing the freezer option so obviously make sure your dough is all sealed up i'm gonna put it into the freezer for two to four hours and i'll see you guys a little bit later and then we can start rolling out putting the oven and then decorating for the best part i'll see you guys in a little while Hello everyone, I am going to roll out my gingerbread dough. You need a little bit of plain flour, 
your rolling pin or a wine bottle i've used a wine bottle on many occasions and that works just as well and you're going to need some gingerbread men cookie cutters i've got some absolutely teeny ones so what i'm going to do i'm just going to flour down my surface so while i am preparing to roll this all out my oven is on at 180 degrees and we're planning on cooking these cookies for about 10 to 12 minutes so yeah preheat your oven for around about 180 already this was frozen already moving fast it, you you think whack in the freezer it's gonna be rock solid this stuff will get gooey very 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 quickly you really want to work fast with this though let's bring a bit more flour right let's roll this all out probably gonna aim for about two to three centimeters thickness that is definitely the thickness i would like it to be right next part we want uh just a plain thin tray and with also a baking paper on. you don't need any extra oil or spray the baking paper will be absolutely fine it will not stick to that i'm just going to cut my shape out all right i'm going to try and be productive here and make the most out of the dough they look amazing right now i'm going to whack that onto the tray cut all the shapes out and whack onto the tray pop into the oven and we can get ready for decorating cookies look at these beautiful cookies made by moi perfectly shaped gorgeous can't go wrong we've done the cookies the cookies out of the oven i'm now letting them cool down now it is decorating time right it's getting real sleeves are rolled up so for decorations icing obviously we are going to have one bowl just white icing we're going to have a green bowl for green icing and obviously some red coloring to make some red icing as well my accessories i've got some googly eyes i don't know if i'm going to use them but it's just nice to have the option got some buttons as well which i'll probably use for like their belly and things like that so i need um piping bags you guys don't have to do this you can just use a fork a spoon and obviously water Ugh. you guys can have as much icing as you want i'm not telling you how much grams you crack out whatever decorations you want to go you go for it i rather cookies more over the top and just a bit of fun really going to add some water i'm just going to do it teaspoon by teaspoon so i'm just putting a few teaspoons of water in and then with your whisker 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 we just want to whisk the water nice and together we want to aim for more of a thicker consistency it's thicker it's easier to control and it's a lot easier to decorate this consistency is perfect that's what i would say i'm happy with that we now want to get a piping bag out fold it down like so want it to go into a glass like that with a spoon just want to sit it in to our piping bag uh, with icing if you don't use it instantly it just dries up so either use it instantly or seal it instantly there are your two options when it comes to icing once it is in your piping bag you just want to unfold it like so we want to twist it like that leave it like that into your glass and then once you're ready we'll cut the bottom but i'm just going to make my green and red icing as well i'm going to sit down for this part i have got white icing i've got my green one i've got my red one as well um you guys can make the red and the green as light or as dark as as much as you want start decorating I mean, they just look like they're on crack. I won't lie. They 
this one <laughs> and just hope they taste really good. But. Um, here are the finishing products. Um, I have to say some of them were made by Sophie, so I won't take all the credit for the most hideous decorating you've ever seen in your life. I definitely think the award goes to Mr. Blobby. I think this is one of the most terrifying cookies you've ever seen in your life. Some of them in little suits, Sophie did an alien, I do like that one. I don't even know what to begin with that one. <laughs> They're all a bit random, I have to say. There you go, there are some of the decorations. I have to say the recipe is super yummy. So if you want a delicious recipe on how to make delicious gingerbreads, absolutely follow the recipe by T. I wouldn't advise following to a T on the decoration side of things. Yeah, that was, um. I mean, they taste good. I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely Christmas. I hope it's going all right for you all. Because I know it's, you know, with everything going on, COVID and restrictions. And Thank you so much for watching again. Anyway, guys, have an amazing day. Do something spontaneous. Stay safe as always, especially I think going on. Lots and lots of love. And bye, everyone.